<coughs> am i audible am i audible for nadis jyoti am i audible <coughs> okay fine then <coughs> let us start the new module in the fluid power systems one which will be uh, we will be discussing about hydraulic circuit uh, designs components of hydraulic uh, circuit before we uh, basically we have to discuss about the circuit design and then the components of the hydraulic uh, circuits but what i do it is i will concentrate more on valves in the initial itself because if you consider the pump as a heart of the system then the valve is treated as a brain of the hydraulic or pneumatic system in mainly hydraulic system what happens the direction of the flow has to be controlled <coughs> second thing is you have to control the flow that is the flow rate has to be controlled pressure has to be controlled and the direction of the flow has to be controlled and the fourth thing is you have to stop or start the flow of the system so these four things is extensively done with the help of the valves so obviously i just want to concentrate more on the valves rather uh, directly getting into the circuits of the hydraulic systems <coughs> So I just want to show you a video where in which now if you see this there are two pistons which will be connected to a common a connecting rod which directs say for example in the first case it is allowing the fluid to flow through the port A and now it is flowing through the port B that means the direction of the fluid movement has been changed. <coughs> now you can see this the inlet pressure port is the same thing see there are number of ways or three ports are there in the two ways puts and two ways that means one way is from inlet to the port a is one way one lay inlet to the port b is uh, second way that means this is three way valve is valve is three way one two and three three ports and two valves so this is how the valves will be maintained so my dear friends whenever you talk about the valves generally i advise you to remember your normal taps normal taps what you use it in your uh, home is it clear so that itself will tell you the functions of that so let me get into this directly that is what i said if the pump is the heart of the hydraulic system then the valve is called as the brain of the hydraulic system basically valves are used to perform a large variety of governing and controlling functions which are as follows the valves which are used to control the pressure of the system is called as a pressure control valves similarly if the valves are used to control the flow then they are called as a flow control valves check valves are also called as a non return valves are also called as uh, the foot valves what they do it is check valves you might have often seen in <coughs> which have been placed at the end of uh, at the end of uh, the pipe which is been placed in your sump or the tank from which we will be flowing through that so i just i'll show you If you can see this, a non-return valve will have uh, like this. I'll, I'll show you with a better animation. <clears throat> As you can see it here, if the fluid is flowing in this left direction. <coughs> this is a spring free flow that means you just imagine this is which has been connected to the sump for a tank at the bottom at the ground floor and the flow which is going to the top floor or the first or second floor once you switch it on 
the flow <coughs> when the flow is flowing in this direction what happens this will be moved in this direction now now you can see this once the flow it is been now you can check this now you can see this now the fluid will flow like this there is a gap over here once you switch off your motor or a pump so what happens is because of the spring action what happens it will comes it relaxes and closes this passage so whatever the four water which has been placed over here cannot go back so whatever you can see it here is a blue color which will be shut down over here itself so this is called as a non return valve or we also uh, in generally we call it as a, a non return valve or a shut valve or a check valves okay foot valves and the mitu kuda we will call it see here this is how it just acts it retracts and comes back whenever the flow is going in this direction <coughs> now generally in a normal water pumps this has been mostly used if they are not used what happens can somebody tell me what happens if this non return valve are not used at the end of your pipe which is placed in your tank the same water will come back the same water will come back if it comes back then what will what is left out here what will be left out here the air will be filled out correct if the air is been filled out here can you pump it next time it is not possible it is not possible we should make sure that there should be a uh, one example i will tell you now you will be having a uh, tender coconut with a straw straw nalli elneer kudita irthira a straw ge if i make a two three holes can you suck the water can you suck the water somebody please answer me no sir no why because you have got a air there instead of that whatever the pressure that you are creating that will be that will be used to suck the air but not the water so the same thing will happen over here if you don't close this if you don't fill this remaining place with the water like this if the water is not there and only if it is the air is there whatever the energy that power you supply it over here that will be utilized to pump only the air so the cavitation will happens my dear friends this is the reason why we always go for a priming priming and now we do it we will close this and we will fill this space with water then we will try to pump the water so that is called as a priming and if this non return valve is not been used then definitely a cavitation will be there and you cannot pump anything neither the water or a, any fluid cannot be pumped so this is called as a non return valve <coughs> is it okay now there are the non return valves then direction control valve direction control valves i just have i have already shown you direction control valves this is nothing but a direction control valves see this is how it will control it when you want the fluid to flow in this direction forte it will allow the fluid to flow to the forte now i want to change the direction to the port b i will change it like this so simple so this is called as a directional control valves is it clear <coughs> flow control valve flow you just uh, i just I'll, i'll show you the flow control flow control valves gella if you imagine your normal your normal taps at home would be sufficient enough to understand that the flow control valve that itself uh, is okay the pressure control valve these are the fourth four functions and four different types of the <coughs> valves that have been extensively used okay now 
this is the pressure control valve <coughs> this is the one position where it has been closed now here is the one that is how we are controlling the pressure of the fluid is it okay <coughs> Now this is the direction control valve which I have already shown you with the videos. The second one is the direction control valve. And the third one is a flow control or the volume control. One and the same my dear friends. Now here you can see it here. This is something like a screw type or you just imagine this is a tap. If you are tightening your tap, what is happening is this is coming down. Once it comes down and it just lands in the cap. <coughs> It just lands here so that what happens you are allowing small amount of water or a fluid to flow if you tighten it completely it will close us so by moving this inner words and outer words that is by by rotating this or by moving this by operating this you can control the flow so the pressure control direction control and volume control okay now the aspects of classification <coughs> Spherical, this is A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, are all are the spherical puppet valves and the bit curry TV. E is the conical one and F is the plate one and the G is the spole valve. Now you can see it here. This is a round color, a round one, which is in a spherical one, which lands and closes this passage. Now this is a, <coughs> a different shape, trapezoidal one, which will closes this shape. And this is a rectangle one, I'm sorry, uh, it's a triangular one, which will, you know, based on the different applications, they use this uh, puppet walls. And now this is an interesting one, which is a conical one which is a conical shape which you have already seen it here like this in a conical shape now this is a plate one which is will be a flat one which closes this complete passage and this is a spool valve spool valve is something like this which just closes okay now let us discuss initially the flow control valves or the flow valves the velocity of the hydraulic cylinders can be influenced by the flow rate. That means if you take a JCB, the arm speed with which it moves, which retracts and extends, depends upon this flow control valve. The speed with which it reaches the target and the speed with which it retracts depends upon this flow control valve. This can be done by adjustable pumps or by flow rate control valves. The flow rate is changed by changing the orifice surface area or by changing the pressure difference and a resistance or dividing the flow rate. That is by changing the orifice surface area. Orifice surface area is nothing but this, my dear friends. Orifice surface area is nothing but this. This is the orifice area. By changing this orifice area, you can control the flow. This is what we are all doing it over here. Okay. What are the advantages of this flow control valve? It is very simple. It is safe in operation, good to dynamic behavior, and it is highly precise in nature. The disadvantages are only it is relatively high losses. Obviously, the pressure with which the flow is control coming, it will be carrying some energy. Somewhere, if you check it, if you restrict it, the energy will be lost. That is the disadvantage. Is it clear? Uh, how I just want to explain it. From syntax which has been placed in second floor, it possesses the potential energy. Correct. So that potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy with which it will be coming through the pipes. Suddenly, if you check with that the taps, so what happens? Relatively, it loses its energy. Okay. Different types are there. For this flow control valve that is a restrictor uh, valve flow control valves 
and flow dividing valves are the three different types of the flow control valves are there is that okay next is how these operates as i have already shown you the same thing now this is in a closed position this is a partially open one this is a completely open one this is called as a needle type valve this will have a screw as you can see it here if you are rotating in a counterclockwise direction it is getting open that means when it is opening obviously it is just lifting upward when you completely open it it will completely open this orifice passage so the maximum flow will be there is that clear now this is the other one you can see it here from the motor the one this this is a motor and this is a pump which pumps it which pumps it so this will be allowing the water to flow the now this is a filter through the filter it will go to the valves and then it will go it will go to the piston where it will be with a higher pressure it retracts maybe it is used to lift or to drag or something like this the piston will move in this direction whatever the flow which has been earlier placed in this section will be sent back through this now this is a graphical representation over here is that clear the flow rate is the term used to describe the volume of liquid flowing through a pipe in a specific period of time that is nothing but we popularly call it as discharge in the kerithiv discharge is nothing but amount of fluid that is being displaced with respect to the time is called as a discharge for example approximately 1 minute in 1 minute it is required to fill a 10 liter bucket from a tap thus the flow rate am account amounts to be 10 liters per minute that you can put it in a meter cubes or you can put it in liters also okay 10 liters or 10 into 10 power of minus 3 meter cube per minute so in hydraulic the flow rate is discharge you know, most of the times you have you might have already done it in your fluid mechanic uh, mechanics uh, laboratory in hydraulics the flow rate is designated as q the following equation applies that is q is equal to v by t q is nothing but flow rate that will be most of the times we uh, <clears throat> designate with the meter cube per second volume will be meter cube and time will be in terms of seconds advantages of uh, <clears throat> hydraulic speed control systems q is equal to a into v this is a continuity equation flow that will be given in this direction so <clears throat> so basically what happens now this is a pump it pumps the 10 liters per minute of uh, fluid and this volume will be filled over here and then this is how it is a simple one if it is a 10 liters per minute now this is a pressure relief valve is there relief valve will check only 5 lpm to the cylinder and the rest of the 5 lpm sent back to the tank this is called as a flow control valve this is how it just releases the flow is it clear how these been uh, control valves are been classified control valves and regulating valves this is a restrictor type and orifice orifice type regulating valves have been classified into one way and two ways restrictor and orifice restrictor will have this type of a flow whereas orifice will have this type of notches or sections idu na nanu graphical way nalli we will represent it we have already dealt in the first module throttle will be set like this if it is set it is indicated like this if it is adjustable it will be shown with a cross arrow mark this is orifice way because orifice we always denote it with the v shape so this is orifice and this is a adjustable orifice this is a two way flow control valve with throttle this is adjustable two way control valve with orifice will be like this these are the circuit symbols for flow control valves 
these are the one you can see it here these are the throttle that is what we call it as a restrictor and this is a needle restrictor type now you can see it here by the symbol itself you can make it out if there is an arrow mark it is adjustable with the throttle one with the adjustable one with the throttle one then it is shown it with a, a small arch so it is nothing but a throttle type now you can see it here now it just comes from the port a it is coming and it restricts and it moves in this direction and allows this flow to flow now when this is flowing in this direction what happened this will be compressed and it will be sent like this the same way it they have also shown it like this from a to b it is moving like this from b to a it is moving like this from a to b there is no movement because there is a check is it clear now this is a movable one since this is an adjustable one they have given it as an arrow mark one way flow control valve this is okay two way flow control valve it is something like this port a from pump it is going to the port a now this will move in this direction now whenever i open this what happens the flow will be moved in this direction and it will be moving in this direction oh hope you can make it out with my arrow mark once this now this is going to the port a if i want to check what happens there are two ways i can adjust this one flow i can adjust with this and the direction i can adjust with this if i open it completely then there will be a maximum flow which will, with which it will be moving in this direction if i open it partially the only a partial flow rate will be there now you can see it here it just goes and it just happens like this this is a two way flow control valve <clears throat> the same thing we have given it in a graphical way that's it nothing else now what is this symbol shows this is a tank this is a control pressure relief valve and this is a control flow and this is a, a piston and this is a connecting rod and this is a cylinder that's it the same thing inflow control this is an inflow control this is a outflow control when which this control flow it is at the inlet this is called as an inflow control it's the same thing if it is been maintained at the outflow that is during the retraction so then we call it as uh, outflow control valves now the second type is nothing but the check valves check valves are the one which are used to stop or shut the flow of the fluid okay. this is what i was talking about this is called as a seat where this ball or a spherical one or a poppet poppet can be of any shape it can be a triangular one or it can be conical one it can be a flat one okay now even if you go for a taps n number of thousand types of taps are available based on this poppet type now this what happens whenever you want to check it up now there is a flow which is coming here because of the pressure flow what happens this ball will be moved up to here this a small rings so maybe a uh, maybe a cushioning type which may be provided with the use of a spring now the flow is flowing and it is going out free flow allowed as a ball unseats unseats and the illinda ikkadege displays agirutha so it will be moving in this direction once the flow is been restricted what happened this ball will come and occupies this seat this seat will bandu kutkon bidutha so that what happened the fluid at this beyond this ball it will not allow this this is called as a non return valve or a check valve now you can see it here my dear friends it will not restrict back or it will not go back this is called as a flow blocked as valves seats at this place this is a actual uh, check valve which has been placed at this position this is a graphical representation my dear friends free flow in this direction and no flow it is in this direction the same one which i have already shown you with some videos where it will not go back correct now this is 
fluid flow which is flowing in this direction and this is an inlet valve open and it goes out like this once it is been the work is been done what happens this inlet valve this puppet will come and occupies this place so that the flow will not be going back in this direction but what happens this the opposite direction this outlet valve will be this puppet will come back so you can see the, in the second picture what happens the inlet valve is closed and the outlet valve is open so the flow will be in this direction getting a point any doubts over here during the inlet what happens this puppet will be open and this puppet will be closed that means the flow will be in this direction and there will not be any flow in this direction whereas here in the other way this puppet will be closed and this puppet will be opened so the flow will be in this direction and the flow will not be there in this direction is it clear okay next the same thing which we have uh, illustrated with some other figures from the pump there it is going into the different circuit circuit 1 circuit 2 and circuit 3 how it will be now these two are checked and only this is open and it will be uh, moving in this direction okay the same thing the pressure keeps varying it restriction in the series so you can see it here different uh, sections will show you the different pressure variations okay now this is the pilot operated check valves pilot pressure to open now this you can see this here what happens is pilot pressure to open check valves now here what happens pilot means there is something like a uh, bypass whereas here pilot pressure is been applied over here in order to open this and then there will be a free flow that means by manually you can operate this by manually you can move this so that what happens this puppet will be re, will be displaced from its normal seating position making this valves or orifice to open is that clear then it will be operated basically what happens in a normal uh, blocked flow this will be the position free flow with a pilot pressure you can move in this direction shuttle valves shuttle valves are something like this from <coughs> flow from left to the outlet will be like this the flow will be from the pump and it will be moving in this direction whereas from the port to two it will be closed now here when the pressure p1 is greater than p2 what happens obviously the pressure with the higher one what happens it will be comes like this when the pressure 2 the flow from the port to 2 if it is more then what happens it closes the port 1 and the flow will be there from this direction now you can ask me if the pressure p1 and p2 both are equal then what happens when the both pressure p1 and p2 are equal then this attains at the middle position then the flow will be from both the directions then the both will be the, from the both the directions now this is the graphical representation you can see this arrow marks are there on both the directions okay this is a p1 and this is a p2 and this is a a will always represent the inlet chamber position of the port A types of now let us go to this uh, pressure control valves these pressure control valves exist in different uh, types it, it is one release pressure relief valves are there pressure unloading valves are there pressure sequence valves are there and then pressure reducing valves and then the pressure counterbalance and safety valves are these are all comes under the category of 
pressure control valves pressure relief unloading sequence pressure reducing counterbalancing and safety valves these all comes under the category of pressure control valves pressure relief valve we have already seen and uh, the seen and uh, discussed about this pressure relief valves in the uh, module 1 and 2 actually what are the advantages of this overload protections pressure relief valves protects the system by maintaining the system set pressure any increase in the pressure in system is relieved to the tank momentarily momentarily a diverting flow to the tank that is what any excess of pressure it, if it is there say for example if i want 10 bars if i'm getting 12 bars of pressure then what happens it releases the pressure of excess pressure and releases that water to the or the fluid to go back to the tank thus overload protection is been achieved i can illustrate it with one example this is something like this it will show you now you can see it here now you can see it here the pressure with which it is coming see now this is how you can adjust it direct acting relief valve pressure relief valve now by adjusting this you can release the pressure of that if it is too tight the pressure will be more if you want a less pressure to be happens what happens he just releases it he just unlocks it now only a little amount of fluid is flowing here like, like in this direction when you open it completely then what happens now you can see the more amount of fluid is flowing so this is how it relieves the pressure of the fluid this is how it controls and acts as pressure relief force now this is the circuit this is a hydraulic uh, pump from which the water is being pumped in this direction from the bottom I, I just want to make you clear now so here the fluid is flowing in from the bottom please be careful the excess pressure of the fluid should be sent to this right extended valve see this is the tank one now fluid is coming from the bottom my the fluid is coming from the bottom this is the main puppet and this is the main spring which stores the energy or which restricts it okay when the fluid this is the pilot operated pilot operated means you can adjust this by manually just talking about this pilot what do you mean by pilot you can adjust it manually whenever you want a higher pressure you can attend this now you can see this you can adjust this wonderful uh, video where in which you can make out the use of this so by adjusting this knob you are adjusting the spring by adjusting the spring you are you are also adjusting this pilot operated puppet by this puppet you can also adjust this main spring so that it can maintains the normal pressure or the desired pressure which you are looking out now you will appreciate this whatever the excess of pressure with, the, with which it is coming will be sent back to the tank once the pressure has been set what happens it will check it it will check this see it it will check now this is wonderful is that understood any doubts this is how it just overload protection has been achieved by this pressure relief valve now this introduction uh, to this uh, basic things uh, i just i will continue it tomorrow yeah. tomorrow we shall discuss about this pressure relief valves okay once again